Something terrifying is happening in the Euphrates River, and scientists have finally revealed what it is. In a recent study conducted by an international team of researchers, they discovered something that could change our understanding of this ancient river forever. It looks like the Euphrates River may be facing a dire future if we don't take action soon. Join us as we learn more about what is happening and why it's so important to act now before things get to the point of no return. But before we do that, let's go over the sheer importance of the Euphrates River throughout time. What was the Euphrates River like at its best? Even though the world hasn't really focused on the Euphrates River for a few years now, it was actually one of the biggest reasons that human civilization got to the point that it's at today. The Euphrates River served as the eastern boundary of the Roman Empire, and it was a major part of the Silk Road trade route, connecting Europe with China, India and other parts of Asia. It allowed merchants to move goods, exotic spices, valuable assets and new areas across extensive distances, while providing a safe passage for travelers. This made it an important part of global commerce for centuries. That wasn't all. Babylon, one of the world's most powerful cities in ancient times, was located on its banks. The city-state reached its peak between 1800 and 1600 BC and was known for its impressive architecture and numerous monuments. What's more, Babylonians developed their own writing system, mathematics and astrology, and the river allowed the basis of that to happen. If you strip things back to the very basics, the river was a major source of sustenance for all sorts of wildlife in the region. It provided an abundance of fish and other aquatic life, which was essential for the ancient inhabitants' survival. In addition to that, it provided a major source of food for the ancient residents in Mesopotamia, as its waters were used to irrigate farmland and grow crops. The fertility of this region was largely due to the Euphrates' silt deposits, which supplied essential nutrients and improved soil quality. This allowed the development of some of the world's earliest civilizations and is also the reason why the river is still associated with fertility. If you take a look at things from a territorial standpoint, the flow of water also provided a natural barrier against enemies, with most cities being built along its banks offering additional protection. These cities prospered due to the trading opportunities that were available by virtue of their locations. As research took place in the region, archaeologists uncovered a wealth of artifacts along its banks, offering insight into the daily lives and histories of Mesopotamia's earliest inhabitants. These artifacts provide invaluable clues about the culture and beliefs of this ancient civilization, such as their religious practices, agricultural techniques and craftsmanship. It's given us insight into the history of the region and how much it really impacted the history of the world. The Euphrates River continues to be a source of life in the region today. It is still used for irrigation purposes and provides drinking water for many cities in the area, making it an indispensable resource for survival. Even in its modern form, it continues to hold a special place in history and culture. It is a reminder of the valuable role that rivers have played throughout human civilization. Despite having been around for centuries, the Euphrates River still remains shrouded in mystery. Its waters have witnessed countless battles, and its banks were home to some of the earliest human civilizations. It is a reminder of how something so powerful can still exist in our modern world. The Euphrates River stands as an enduring testament to the power and beauty of nature, a force that has shaped human history for centuries. But that's not the only reason why this river is talked about. There are centuries-old theories related to it too. Word from Beyond the Euphrates River is historically significant for being mentioned in both the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. It was a major part of the story of Noah's Ark, as well as other stories from the Bible. It is also featured prominently in many ancient Mesopotamian myths, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh. The biblical importance of the Euphrates River is undeniable. It was said to be part of God's creation, and it served as an integral part of many stories in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, we hear that a river flowed out from Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. One of those four rivers is believed to have been the Euphrates River. 
In the story of Noah's Ark, God commanded Noah to build an ark and gave him instructions on where to go. Go out in the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. This command was directed to Noah after God said he would bring a flood upon the world, and the river was part of God's plan to wash away all of the wickedness in the world. In addition to its biblical significance, the Euphrates River holds great importance for many people today. It is a source of irrigation and drinking water for millions of people living along its banks and is an important link between Iraq and Syria. It is also home to a variety of fish and other wildlife species, making it an important part of the local ecosystem. And its power as a source of energy has been harnessed for centuries, providing electricity to nearby cities and towns. As one of the few remaining great rivers left on Earth, the Euphrates River holds both a storied past and a bright future. It is a source of life, hope and possibility for the millions of people who call it home. And right now, that hope is in danger. Human Nature versus Mother Earth As we've talked about earlier in this video, the ancient city of Babylon was one of the first to benefit from the Euphrates River. The water from this river enabled the city to become extremely powerful and successful, setting a precedent for other nations around it. But when the Treaty of Lausanne was signed in 1923, the water of the river had to be sectioned off and its use had to be shared and rationed among the different countries. In 1946, Turkey and Iraq decided to come to an agreement regarding the Euphrates River. This agreement stated that if Turkey wanted to make any changes or interventions with regard to the river, it had to get approval from Iraq first. Additionally, Iraq was also allowed to build dams in the Turkish territory alongside the river, granting them ability to control how much water could flow into Turkey. This agreement was essential for ensuring a fair distribution of resources among the different countries involved and that no one country would benefit from all of it. Of course, this did not stop some people wanting more than their share. Human nature has always been selfish and this was no exception. Some people wanted all the water for themselves, regardless of the consequences that would come from it. The Euphrates River has become a source of contention between nations, and even though an agreement was made, its fate still hangs in the balance. Who will end up benefiting from the river and how much will be allocated to each country? These are questions that still remain unanswered. Ultimately, it is up to the nations involved to come together and make decisions regarding this great river in order to ensure a fair and prosperous future for everyone who depends on it. Over the next 20 years, Turkey, Syria and Iraq began building their own dams on the Euphrates in order to tap its power. The more dams that were built, the more hydroelectricity was produced. This enabled them to grow their economies as electricity became more accessible for residents living in these countries. However, this development put Iraq at an extreme disadvantage since it was located at the very end of the river, meaning that whatever water flowed down from the dams was all that it received. This amounted to a mere fraction of the full capacity of the Euphrates, leaving them with very little resources for agriculture and overall development. As such, there is quite a bit of tension between Iraq and its neighbouring countries as they compete for the river's resources. In 1975, the amount of water flowing into Iraq's dams had decreased drastically to 9.4 cubic kilometres, a figure that was much lower than the 15.3 cubic kilometres recorded in 1973. This caused great alarm and even escalated to the threat of bombing Syria's Tabqa Dam had it not been for intervention from Saudi Arabia and the Soviet Union. Despite the agreement that was made, the problem of water scarcity in Iraq remained and it seemed as if this dispute over the Euphrates would never end. This led to stronger calls for more equitable control of rivers' waters and a better understanding that such resources should not be controlled but taken care of too. What will become of the Euphrates and who will benefit from its power? 
That seemed to be the main question everyone was asking. But suddenly, things took a turn for the worst. Instead of asking the question of who was going to have control over the Euphrates River, things became about what was happening to the river altogether. What's happening to the Euphrates River right now? What happens when you have such a great resource and all you do is take from it without replenishing it? Things eventually take a turn for the worst. Unfortunately, this is what happened to the Euphrates River. This river was so large that it could be seen from space, feeding life and fertility to the world. Now it is nothing but a sad reminder of what once was. The image is downright terrifying to see the river that was doing just fine now reduced to barely anything at all. Today there's no water and no signs of life. Crops have withered away, trees have dried off, and people are forced to travel miles in order to get a few bottles of drinking water. Nine million Syrians live near the Euphrates, and their lives are now put in danger if they cannot find an alternative source of sustenance. Scientists have revealed that as of right now, there's no explanation for what happened to the Euphrates River and why it's drying up the way it is. But that revelation itself is shocking and terrifying. If science can't even give us one explanation of what's going on, you know that something bigger is at play here. But as it turns out, this devastating change was predicted centuries ago. Ancient texts spoke of a river that would one day be reduced to nothingness, with its life-giving waters no longer able to provide sustenance. Sadly, the prophecy has now come true, and the Euphrates River is a distant memory of what it used to be. Do the prophecies get specific? Normally, we discuss the facts that can be seen and verified in the present. However, for this video, we will take a deeper dive into the past by delving into the book of Revelation from the Bible. In chapter 16, there is a passage that states, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. Basically, this means that when the bowl was placed, all of the water from within the river evaporated and completely dried up. It could have been a literal cup during that era, but in our current times it can be construed as the dams which have taken away all of the water from the river. This prophecy is further emphasized in Revelation chapter 9, verse 14, which states that the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates must be released. This implies that for this to happen, there would need to not be a presence of a river. From this, many people have come to the conclusion that if the river dries up, it will indicate the start of a series of events that would eventually lead to Christ's second coming. This has made people both fearful and curious as to what is to come in the near future. But if that's not enough for you to believe in all of this, it gets even crazier. The Garden of Eden is said to be in the same area as the Euphrates River, so it only makes sense that this would be an ideal place for Jesus Christ to establish his heavenly kingdom and conquer his enemies. In light of this, Joseph Caballetta, pastor of Watchman Ministries, conducted a Watchers Conference recently and warned Ugandans to be on the alert for signs of the apocalypse. He believes that the drying up of the river is just a precursor and it aligns with what is written in Revelation 9 and Ezekiel 38. There will be an immense conflict as the Euphrates River slowly diminishes. Given how many countries are linked to this problem, it is possible that war may break out between them as they all vie for the dwindling resources. Unless some sort of decisive action is taken to restore the river to its former glory, the economies and livelihoods of those living in areas around the banks will suffer greatly. It is a truly terrifying prospect and one that should not be taken lightly. What's worse is that science can't even explain how or why this is happening, let alone theorize ways to reverse these effects. From the looks of it, it seems that this is a change of biblical proportions and maybe it's our sins coming for us. It's possible that the only way out of this is to repent, but could that really save us? Only time will tell. And on that crazy note, we'll wrap up today's video. What do you think is behind the drying of the Euphrates River? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up 
And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.